I am Isaiah Hawkins and my major is music education. I want to be a music education major because I had a lot of really good music educators in my life growing up and I saw the effect that they had both on their students and the community and I have a talent in music so I wanted to put that to use and have that same kind of impact. Hi, my name is Hadia Knight. I'm a violin performance major at Michigan State University. Since I was about five years old, I've wanted to be a musician. And um, it's been such an honor for me to come to Michigan State University to pursue a music degree. My name is Megan Pape. I'm a music performance major here at Michigan State University. And I absolutely love and enjoy what I do every day. I'm in the acapella group State of Bits. Acapella is a style of music in which all the performers in a set group or a soloist makes all the sounds of the song they perform with their bodies and with their voices. So a lot of what this ends up being is a sort of choral setting as you might see but a little bit modified in which we do more contemporary uh, repertoire and we do different techniques with our voice to imitate like the synthesizers and the instruments that you might hear in a song on the radio. In State of Fifths, I sing baritone and or tenor. I arrange and I do vocal percussion. With beatboxing, especially with acapella, there are only a couple sounds that you really use and then you use a lot of variations of those. So the first one and the most important one is the bass drum. So if you picture a drum set, that's the big one that's on the floor that you use the foot pedal with, you kind of step down. So with that, the letter you think of is a B or a P, so it sounds like this. And then the next one is the hi-hat, so with that it's like the little symbol if you picture the drum set, and the letter you think of is a T, so that's And then the next one is the snare, so that's, if you picture a drum set, it's right down to your left, people use it on the off beats. So there are a couple different ways you can do that. And you see with each of the ones you use, you can get a different timbre, you can use it in different spots. So if you put those together, you can sort of get a basic drum rhythm, so. And then since you have the basic sounds down, if you practice a lot, you can really just sort of play around with it and use those sounds and similar sounds in different ways. I'm a part of a trio with clarinet, piano, and myself, a violin, and I'm also a part of the MSU Symphony Orchestra. I enjoy playing with others the most. We can kind of feed off of each other's energy, and it's a lot of fun as well. I'm used to playing in an orchestra, I started playing in an orchestra when I was 10, but now this is a lot, um, a lot of fun and a lot of advanced music as well. Um, most of the students that I'm in the orchestra with are graduate students, so they have a lot of experience and um, a lot of knowledge to pass on to me. When I go into my lessons, I'm expected to prepare um, the piece from start to end for the most part, um, unless there are any questions that I have for the piece. In addition, I have to make sure I know the notes so my teacher doesn't have to work on those and can work on maximizing my musicianship. I've had a lot of experiences in music, thankfully, um, but I think my favorite would be playing with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra on their holiday concert. Um, I was able to be um, a featured soloist on their Holiday Pops program. It was a lot of fun um, and the support that they gave me was amazing and I will always love them for it. Um, for me it's always a performance. The performance is absolutely my favorite part, you know, getting on stage, looking out and seeing the audience and really swaying them with the music that you create. Um, you know, making them feel something from nothing is like a really good feeling. To me, music is just being able to take all the stress, all the events that are happening in your life, all the negative things that are happening in your life, and just forget them and turn them into something positive through being able to play and express yourself in a way that's different than most people can. So for my weekly lesson, I prepare many things like, um, first of all, I start with like basic warm-up like with trills and low notes. Then I do, I work out of three different technique books. Um, two are like warm-up fish books and then one is like a fast technique book. So I prepare like six of the warm-up exercises and then one etude from the um, fast technique book. Then I also work on stuff like this, which is like um, 
all of this is like famous excerpts from famous symphony like you're in Brahms. Um, and then I work on, after that I work on a solo piece. Here's one of the solos I'm working on now. It's a um, contemporary piece so there's no accompaniment. And then I finally work on things like for classes and for school like here's for the audition I have coming up for um, ensembles. I have like a few different excerpts that I'm working on now too. So a bunch of stuff that I work on every week. I usually practice about two hours a day. Um, of course I always incorporate like basic warm-ups and skills in the beginning too and then like a warm bath and low notes and stuff like that. Well, on any given day I'll wake up in the morning probably around 6.30 or 7 like that and I will shower and get ready and I will go get breakfast ideally and then I'll go to my first class at 9. And then I have classes straight from 9 to 1. Those range from music history, music theory, uh, German diction because I'm a singer, uh, ear training, and then choir. And after 1, 1.30, I have a little bit of a break. I may go get lunch or something like that. And then afterwards, I'll come down here, start practicing a little bit of my voice stuff, a little bit of my piano stuff. Uh, I may improvise on piano for a little bit just to mess around and get some things out of my ear and out of my head and into actual music. And then I will go back to my room, I'll relax for a little bit, do some homework, and then probably get ready for a fits rehearsal or a fits gathering or something like that. When the semester gets tough, like when I get sick or when I get overwhelmed with work, the thing that keeps me going is imagining what it'll be like when I'm actually out in the field. When I become a teacher, I plan on doing a lot of different things. I plan on being a leader in my school's choral program. I'm focusing on choir directing as my aspect of music ed, and also directing their a cappella program. And on top of that, hopefully being in an a cappella group that competes and sings and performs professionally of my own. So the idea of doing all that, the different conducting techniques, the arranging and composing and songwriting that I'll be doing as, as an adult, as a professional, by then that's all really exciting to me. So the impact I'll be able to have on my students as well, all of that is what keeps me going through the rough days. Um, well my schedule varies on different days, but for instance on Monday, I work in the morning and then I have my first two classes. I go ahead and have a little time to myself to eat lunch and to practice and study. Um, and then I have my afternoon classes, including orchestra. I've had several inspirations um, to play music. Um, I went to classical music concerts from when I was young as well. Um, my parents like to expose me to different forms of arts and I love them all. Whenever I get stressed out or when I have a lot going on, I make sure to take time for myself. Um, I'll maybe sleep a little bit extra, make myself a cup of tea, and I also take ballet lessons to release stress. Um, for fall semester, insane. So wake up at 8 o'clock every morning, you know, shower, eat, classes from roughly 9 to 3 every day, and then marching band from four to six every day, Mondays until nine, and then in that chaos, trying to find two hours to practice my instrument, half hour to practice piano, and then cramming stuff in like lessons, piano lessons, studio class, <laughs> and then every once in a while when I get a little bit of free time, it's kind of nice to relax. I don't think I could imagine a day where I'm not involved in music and listening to professionals, listening to, um, especially listening to people who said, you know, I wish I kept going with music, is like, that's probably my inspiration the most, is seeing myself in 20 years. I don't want to picture, you know, me without playing music. I couldn't picture that. So I think that that really motivates me to keep going. That music life is taking what we put so much work into, our instruments, our voices, our craft, and being able to share that with the world through performances, through making a difference in education, or through just making the world a better place, making your community a better one. That music life, to me, it is something that keeps me going through the tough times um, and something that just means that I eat, sleep, and breathe music. Music life to me is practicing your butt off for a performance in front of, it could be tens of people, it could be hundreds of people, it could be thousands of people, to inspire them and make them feel something greater than just notes on the page. Put your mind to something, anything, you can do it, no matter what it is. If it's, I want to be in the DSO, if it's, I want to be in the Chicago Symphony, 
if you work hard enough and you put everything that you have into it, you can do it.